Okay, um, I'm Mrs Hudson and I'm going to be sharing with you Quill Soup, written by Alan Durant, illustrated by Dale Blankenar and published by Tiny Owl Publishing. Quill Soup. Noku, the porcupine, was hungry and tired. He'd been traveling through the valley of a thousand hills and hadn't eaten for days. He saw a small village ahead and his spirits lifted. Food and shelter at last, he thought. Meanwhile, in the village, the animals caught sight of Noku. There's a stranger coming, squeaked monkey. Quick, run to your homes, shouted Meerkat. Noko trudged into the village. It was silent and empty. Hello, friends, he called, but there was no reply. Can you see all the animals hiding in their homes? Noko went to the first house and tapped on the door. Yes, said Warthog. I've traveled a long way and I'm very hungry, said Noko. Do you have anything I can eat? Warthog shook her big head. I'm sorry, she replied. I ate a big lunch and all my food is gone. And behind the door, this is Warthog's home. Can you see all the fruit on the trees? Mm. Noko knocked at the next house. How can I help? asked Rabbit. Please, I need some food, said Noko. So do I, squeaked Rabbit. Rabbit exclaimed, sorry. My greedy brother came to visit and ate all my food. I have nothing left. If we look inside Rabbit's house. Can you see what they are? Noko knocked at Monkey's door. Yes, what is it? Monkey asked. I wonder if you have any food to spare a poor traveller, Noko inquired. We are poor villagers, Monkey grumbled. We don't have any spare food. So Noku went to Aardvark's house. And Meerkat's house. And Pangolin's house. But he came away hungry. None of them, they said, had any food. By this time, Noko was very tired and very hungry indeed, but his brain was as sharp as the quills on his back. He could see from the villagers sleek coats and rounded bellies that they were lying. He knew they had food, but how was he going to get some? He sat and he thought, and after a while, he came up with a plan. Uh, I wonder if I might have a little fire and a large pot of water, he asked the villagers. Yes, of course, they replied. They couldn't refuse him that. What do you 
think NOCO is going to be doing? NOCO put the pot on the fire to boil. It seems I shall have to make my own food, he sighed. I shall make quill soup. He plucked three quills from his back and dropped them into the pot. But surely the quills are too hard and sharp to eat, Warthog said. Wait and see. Soon they will soften and release their flavour to make a delicious soup, Noko explained. He bent over the pot and dipped in his paw. Then he licked it and nodded. Mmm, tasty, he said. Just how his majesty likes it. The animals are very curious about what, what um, Noko is up to now. You've met the king, squeaked Meerkat. Many times, said Noko casually. I always make him quill soup. He loves it. Noko tasted the soup again. If only I had some carrots, he said ruefully. Rabbit's ears shot up. He wanted to taste quill soup that was fit for a king. I think my greedy brother may have left a carrot or two, he blurted, and he hopped away to fetch them. Noko added the carrots to the water and tasted the soup again. Lovely, he announced. Of course, the king likes mealies in his quill soup. I've got mealies, squeaked Meerkat, and she ran away to find them. Each time Noko tasted the soup, there was something that needed to be added. Beans, peas, potatoes, spinach. In moments, as if by magic, all of these things appeared. So the animals did have food. Now, Noko's soup was thick and rich. Once again, he tasted it. Perfect, he declared, unless don't suppose anyone has a few worms? Pangolin did. Noko told the villagers to fetch their bowls. There's plenty of soup to share, he said. And share they did. They drank bowl after bowl of the delicious soup in the firelight until the big pot was empty. All of those animals enjoying the soup. Noko sat back, looked up at the stars and yawned. I wonder if you might have a hole where I could sleep, he asked. A hole, cried Monkey, for our friend who has cooked delicious quill soup for the king and who has the generosity to share it with strangers, piped Aardvark. No, my friend, said Monkey, you, Noko, shall have the very best bed in my house. You're too kind, Noko smiled. Before they went to their beds, Noko and the villagers sang together, shared stories and danced in the moonlight. And later, with a full tummy and a happy heart, 
Noko the Traveller went to sleep at last. Good night.